How's it going everyone? Welcome to the channel. The new 1.26 patch is out and it has some significant changes to trade and colonization. So I decided to make a guide on Portugal to get a feel for those new mechanics and see how they differ from the older patches. Portugal has one of the strongest national ideas for trade and colonization. So for this guide, we are going to concentrate on those two aspects of game and not worry too much about Europe. We will also explore the possibility of taking naval or maritime ideas that are not used very frequently as they have some good policies attached to them now. If you want to see which policies were changed in the new patch, you can check out my video on that. Let's first quickly review the changes to trade and colonization in the new patch. Paradox has reworked some trade flows around India and Africa this patch. The biggest change was connecting the Coromandel node to Cape directly. This means that all the spice trade from Indonesia and the riches of India can flow directly to Cape and you don't need to control all of Arabia or Zanzibar trade area. This change has some significant impact on how colonizers should play early game and we will talk about it more in detail later. There are a lot more centers of trade now. I mean really a lot more. And now they can be upgraded to level 2 and level 3 centers of trade which among other things increase your trade power. The upgrades cost 200 and 1000 ducats respectively. So the upgrades aren't cheap, but if you focus down on which centers of trade you want to upgrade, your investments is going to reap significant benefits. Charter company is a new mechanic at 1.26. You can now buy a province from any nation in a trade company region. The province you buy with this mechanics already has your core so you don't need to spend monarch points which is great. It's not cheap though and the prices scale depending on province and country development and opinion modifiers. For example, if you have an adjacent province, AI is less likely to sell you another one. So you cannot just buy the whole coastline of India, that would be ridiculous. Trade companies have been a great way to expand for colonizers in game and in the latest patch they received a major buff. Now you can build extra buildings in these trade companies to boost goods, production efficiency, trade trade power, trade steering, and other things. Again, this requires a lot of ducats, but if you pay for them strategically, you will see big returns for your investment. Let's look at some colonization changes next. The policies around colonization have been streamlined, I think devs did a great job here. There are some policies that you'll pick when playing as a colonizer, and some of the new policies associated with them are amazing. For example, you will almost always take exploration and expansion ideas for extra colonists, settler increase, and trade perks. Now you can get minus 50% native uprising, which means plus 50% extra native assimilation with the new policy. And since your first policy is free, you can get that perk for no cost. This is a significant boost for colonizers, giving a small goods produced bump and really increasing colony growth. You can also use your colonizer to upgrade development in your provinces now. Although I don't see much use coming from it honestly, you might use it late game when you don't have provinces to colonize, but the return from it is probably not worth the effort. The jury is out on that mechanic. Now that we have reviewed all trade and colonization changes in the new patch and DLC, let's start with our opening moves for Portugal. I should reiterate here that this guide is for playing as a pure colonizer and we are basically going to ignore Europe. It doesn't mean you aren't going to conquer provinces because we will do that a lot. It just means that we will play to Portugal's strength and build up our forces and economy from there. You get some scripted document advisors at the start, so take the discounted level 2 admin and the discounted level 3 diplo guy and any level 1 military guy. Set Morocco and Granada as rivals. Set Tunis as your third rival in December. This is to make sure that your rivals don't band together. Bring army maintenance to zero. Mothball all forts and delete the fort in Evora. Set four light ships to protect trade in Sevilla and one heavy to hunt pirates there. And set the other two heavy and one light ship to explore West Africa. Portugal starts with an explorer even though you don't have the exploration idea yet. The idea is to explore just West Africa soon as you never know when your explorer might die. This will save you time and diplo points later as you don't have to wait for an explorer to start colonizing when you get the first exploration idea. Once you're done exploring West Africa, get your explorer to help with protecting trade in Sevilla. Build light ships to force limit, this will satisfy a mission and once the mission is done, you can sell your transport if you want, but I prefer to keep mine as shuttling armies to and from Sueta is easier that way. Ally and Royal Mary Castile and break your alliance with England. 
they will go into a defensive war against France and you don't want to fight France early game or ever actually for this playthrough. Now you will be losing money and you will take a few loans for the first couple of decades. Just keep paying loans whenever possible, you will be fine. The higher cost advisors are going to die soon as the scripted ones are in their 40s and 50s, after which you can get regular level 1 advisors which helps with finances a bit. Sometimes even your ally might help you with loans. Portugal starts with a regency which means you cannot start wars until 1447. Start building spy network in Morocco. We will take Tangiers as that fulfills a mission and it gives you more trade power in Sevilla note. Granada is a juicy target at the start, but you have truce with them till 1448. Unfortunately, Castile's truce with them expires earlier than yours, so if they go for Reconquista, you can't do much about it. Ideally, you would want Granada to ally Morocco and for Castile to join the war with a promise of land, but this doesn't always happen. You will have to figure out the best time to fight them based on the alliance web in North Africa. Your navy is strong enough to have naval dominance over Morocco and even Granada, but if they ally Tunis, you can't take them on your own. Usually there is one alliance between Morocco, Tlemcen and Tunis, so try to ally the third wheel here as they will help you out with promise of land. The objective is to take Tangiers. You can also humiliate if you have a significant upper hand, but you don't have a strong army so it's not always possible. Just take Tangiers and peace out, you will get more chances to take provinces from Morocco. If Granada joins the war against Morocco, humiliate them and peace out. Give a province or two to Castile if they help you out. It's important to get humiliate here to get the splendor generation going as you have a settler increase perk in the first age. It's crucial to establishing fast early colonies. If you ever find Granada all alone without allies, declare with humiliate rival CB immediately. You can peace out either with humiliate rival or show strength. Humiliate rival needs 40% war score and it gives you 30 power projection and satisfies the age objective. Show strength needs 100% war score and it gives you 30 power projection and 100 monarch points each, but it doesn't satisfy the age objective, which in my opinion is an oversight by the devs. I hope this gets fixed in a future patch. You need to beeline to admin tech 5, then get the first colonist as soon as possible and start colonizing Arguin. In the older patch, it was beneficial to start colonizing the new world first as that gave you more money quicker and it also guaranteed your colonial dominance over the new world. But this strategy changed in the new patch because of the changes I mentioned earlier. Your top priority here is to get full dominance of the Cape Note as that's where most of the money is going to come from. So your plan for colonization will be West Africa, then Congo region, then Cape. This strategy will guarantee that other colonizers don't get any significant trade power here and it also completes few missions. Keep an eye on the missions. Portugal gets some really good perks from it. As soon as you see any other colonizer starting to colonize the new world, you should spare colonists to start colonization there too. You will have the settler growth advantage early on, so you should be able to beat them to the first colony, which means you get the benefit of Treaty of Tordesillas. Always prioritize the centers of trade first, then fill in the rest of the provinces. You will colonize West Africa, then Congo, then Cape, and eventually move to East Africa. The colonization process is rather slow, so you need to start taking provinces from African nations as well. For start, focus on taking just the coastal centers of trade, then take any provinces in the trade company areas. After that, you can focus on taking the inland centers of trade and gold mines, but that will come much later. You don't need to have a big army to conquer these provinces, by the way. In fact, you don't need to have a big army until late game. I only had a 20k for the first 150 years or so and got up to only 50k in the later 1600s. You should have naval dominance, which will ensure you can select your target carefully and land your troops for quick war. You do need to invest in your navy, as you should have naval supremacy over everyone after the first 50 years or so. Strong navy is key here. Always give your conquered provinces to trade companies when possible. I don't even bother converting their religion first as that just gives more unrest and I would rather not deal with rebels when I have a small army and a small manpower pool. The religious unity hurts for a bit but we can fix that later with the humanist idea group. Before approaching East Africa, see if you can get a province from Kilwa as a charter company. They will sell you Sofala which is a center of trade and it gives you a foothold for conquest later. Do this before you get a colony there though as adjacency negative modifier will deter any country from selling you provinces. Or if you don't have enough ducats, you can just go the usual route, colonize and conquer. 
You can take your time building colonies in the new world, but you do need some presence, so don't completely avoid it. Caribbeans are a rich source of money, so make sure you got a colony going there sooner, as that will also help with the trade power later. You can get your Mexico colony going faster by attacking one of the countries there. The Mexican countries might attack your colony later, just enforce peace and join the war. These wars are not difficult as long as you have naval dominance and enough transports to ferry your army. Start your colonies in Southeast Asia as soon as you can. There are some serious rich provinces there, which will give you a lot of trade power. Fabricate and attack countries with weak allies. Again, as long as you have naval dominance, these wars will be easy. The provinces here will give you a launching base for future wars in India and China. Now that you have some significant presence in African coasts and some colonies going in Southeast Asia, you should see your trade income start to go up. You can increase this further by the new buildings and trade companies. These buildings give you bonuses to supply limit or defensiveness, which I never use. Production efficiency, which I prioritize for areas that have valuable goods like slaves or spices. Trade power, which I prioritize for areas with center of trades and more tax income, which I leave for last. You can also have buildings that are restricted to just one per trade company. Two of them give extra land and naval force limit modifiers, which are low priority, especially as they cost 1000 ducats each. And two others give you extra trade steering and extra trade value and army tradition. I think both these buildings are overpowered and I consider them very good investments, even at 1000 ducats each. One other thing, all these trade company buildings don't require any build time, which I think might change in future patches because right now they seem really overpowered. You should also upgrade your centers of trade as soon as you get enough ducats. Start by braiding the ones you own in Sevilla, as you need a lot more trade power there. Sevilla node isn't an end node, and you need to make sure the outgoing money is minimal. Again, the upgrading of centers of trade doesn't take any time, so as soon as you have the money, click the button. There are a few restrictions though. You cannot upgrade when at war, you cannot have more than one level 3 center of trade in the same area, you can only upgrade a center of trade if it's in a state or a trade company. The number of level 3 centers of trade is the same as the number of merchants you have. But as a colonizer, you will get merchants from all your trade companies and all your colonies and idea groups. So you can have a lot of level 3 centers of trade. Basically, upgrade all your centers of trade from Sevilla to Ivory Coast Node to Cape to Zanzibar all the way to India and Southeast Asia to at least level 2 and you will be rich beyond belief. I know we said we won't be paying attention to Europe, but we can be a little opportunistic when it comes to getting some provinces from there. As I mentioned earlier, Sevilla is not an end node, and you need a lot of trade power there to restrict outgoing ducats. For this, you need all those juicy centers of trade from Castile in Iberia. Yes, it's time to backstab Castile or Spain, and France will help you out with it. At some point mid-game, you need to backstab Castile or whoever is the dominant force there. France will demand some provinces, so give them some land too. Take as many centers of trade as you can, especially Sevilla and Toledo. So France is going to be a long-term ally now, and it's important to have them as allies so you don't get attacked in the mainland while you're ferrying your armies across the globe. France will desire some of your provinces, so keep improving relations with them. One of the things to watch out for is to be careful when breaking the Treaty of Tordesillas. If France gets their colony before you somewhere, you can let them have it. It's okay to give them one colonial region, for now. You have plenty of areas to expand in. Another way you can take European land is by royal marriages and PUs. Keep an eye on the disputed succession tab and try to royal marry any nation with old ruler and no heir. You never know when you get lucky. Your objective in North Africa is to take control of Safi trade node, and taking over Morocco is not that hard. If they are allied to Ottomans, just wait till they are busy in another war, but make sure you release subjects here as Berber provinces have 50% increased coring cost, and you don't want to spend all that admin points. By 1700, you should have complete dominance over Africa and Southeast Asia trade nodes. Now you will be swimming in money, and although you don't have the strongest army, you can just throw mercs in the meat grinder against whoever is the strongest in India and against Ming. Late gun objective is to get all those trade company provinces if you are keen on it. Next, let's look at ideas. Of course, you will start with exploration for early colonization boost. Next, go for expansion to continue the colonization dominance. Next, you should take a military idea to buff up your army. Either offensive or defensive is good. By this time, your religious unity will be suffering, so you need to go humanist. Humanist also has some good policies. I don't recommend going religious, 
as you cannot convert provinces in trade company regions anyway. With the new patch, I recommend going naval next, as having the naval dominance is key and naval ideas have some new policies associated with them which makes it fun. Next ideas are up to you. I would go Diplo for the extra diplomat and policy, then quality for some army buffs and even more overpowered navy, and finish it up with either another military idea if you feel you need more firepower, or go trade to get more merchants which means more level 3 center of trades just to see how much money you can make. Exploration expansion policy is a must. With it, you can change your native policy to native trading and still get no native uprisings while having a small boost to goods produced, along with a lot of native assimilation pop-ups like this one. Exploration naval policy gives you extra 20% naval engagement, which means your ships fight 20% better, ensuring your naval dominance. Humanist exploration policy gives you more settler increase along with an extra 50% native assimilation. That means with the earlier policy, you get 100% native assimilation. This a significant boost to economy and settler growth. Expansion naval policy gives reduced liberty desire in subjects, which is helpful as you will have a lot of subjects. Later, you can get more policies from trade idea groups for more trade power and steering if you just want to keep making money. If you are lucky, you can spawn colonialism manufactories and enlightenment. You can also spawn global trade if you manage to make Sevilla highest value trade node by 1600. This is a bit harder though as it's not an end node. Spawning institutions is mostly RNG though, so don't worry if you don't spawn them. You are in Europe, so you will get institutions fast anyways. You can also afford level 5 advisors, giving you enough monarch points to develop institutions by yourself. And since you are making so much money, you can build many factories and universities everywhere which helps with institution spread. I really like the Portugal mission tree. You should try to follow it as they give you some amazing perks and claims. Portugal also has some really good events. One of them, Vasco de Gama event, that you get from completing a mission gives you the province of Goa for free. It's a province for free. It's amazing. In my current game, I have played till 1679, which basically puts me at late game. If you look at it, my empire doesn't seem so big. I only seem to have a few provinces here and there, but my finances tell a different story. I'm making almost 800 ducats in income, which is insane in 1679. This shows you how important it is to target key provinces in the relevant trade areas. It also helps that I have 17 merchants directing trade, and that means 17 level 3 centers of trade, and a whole lot more level 2s. Since I have so many coastal provinces, my naval force limit is huge, giving me even more trade power with light ships. And I get free power projection by prioritizing my rivals. Also, my naval tradition is ridiculously high because of high number of level 3 coastal centers of trade. I am having a lot of fun playing as colonizer, and it's frankly a refreshing change from going full expansionist most games. So hats off to the devs here for the awesome changes to trade and colonization policies. Reddit and the forums have been complaining a lot about some changes in the new patch, but the devs here deserve credit for giving us an option to change the gameplay style. I plan on finishing this game with the aim to own all trade company land everywhere, and I will upload a time lapse when I'm done. Till then, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.